My name is Jonathan Jansen. I'm from South Africa. I am the president of a, a university in the middle of the country called the University of the Free State. And I am now at Stanford University for three months finishing a book on uh, what I've learned over five years about working with young people uh, who come from very, very different uh, backgrounds, black and white South Africans, many of whom have been living uh, lives of segregation in their homes, in their churches, in their schools, uh, in their communities, uh, in their sports clubs, and so on. And uh, at our university, the students got there, and there was immediate conflict when the black students were integrated into this former white uh, Afrikaans university. So much so that there was uh, uh, violence on campus and, 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 and great conflict in the student residences where they lived. And this culminated in a horrific racial incident uh, in which four white male students abused five uh, black workers. That made news across the world, and I was invited to uh, come to that university as the new leader in the wake of that crisis. Over the period of five years at the university, I was astounded by the incredible progress these young people, black and white, would make uh, in finding each other across all of the, uh, you know, the borders, the barriers, that stood between them of, of race, of religion, uh, of culture, of language, uh, and, and how they would come, many of them, to an understanding of themselves as human beings first. Now, of course, none of this happens uh, uh, in a vacuum, and I've been very lucky to work with a team of more than 20 people who work night and day to make sure that the conditions were set that enabled people not merely to tolerate each other, in the same space, but in fact to embrace each other as human beings. And that is what this book is about uh, that I'm about to finish. Now, while this is a South African story, even as I speak, there are conflicts around the world having to do with difference, whether it is the uh, terrible uh, shooting of the young black man in Ferguson, Missouri, which led to protests across the United States, whether it is the difficulty that France has at the moment of dealing with difference with respect to uh, young Muslim uh, men and women who uh, you know, claim in the name of Islam to commit horrific uh, acts of violence, um, or whether it is South Africa with its ongoing turmoil um, uh, around issues of race, identity, and difference. So this is what I've learned that could be very, very useful as countries uh, around the world look at South Africa, not simply for its great iconic leader Nelson Mandela, but for his legacy in the lives of so many of us, and especially in the lives of uh, black and white youth. So the first lesson that for me is absolutely important is that you cannot integrate or bring people together uh, 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 and by simply physically uh, putting them in the same space. In fact, it could be very dangerous because people come with their stereotypes, they come with their bitterness, they come with their hatred, and simply putting people together without laying the groundwork for togetherness uh, uh, could be dangerous. And so the first lesson uh, for me is that you cannot respond to a crisis when it happens. You can't respond and resolve the issues of race in Ferguson, Missouri uh, when a black man is shot. You have to work very, very hard at setting the conditions for, in that case, trust between the police and the community. Uh, and so on. Similarly, at the University of the Free State, we had to work very, very hard to make sure that students at least could talk to each other. And so for more than 100 hours a year, they had opportunities in which outside of the classroom, they could engage each other around perceptions of, uh, of, of race, of 
religion, of culture, of eating habits, and, and that kind of thing. And so it takes labor. I call this the labor of intimacy, to really bring people together in peacetime. In other words, not when there's a crisis, but between crises, so that when the crisis happens, and it will, in countries with long histories of slavery, which is both the United States and South Africa, long histories of segregation and inequality, uh, uh, these things recur. But if you prepare your future generation of leaders, that is, students at schools and universities, to begin to deal with these issues before there's a crisis, uh, this can happen, first of all, this takes a lot of time and resources, but this has great spin-offs, not just for schools and universities, but for society as a whole. The second thing, lesson that I've learned is you have to judge a situation within its context. That is, never single out individuals in a crisis, whether it's the perpetrator or the victim, and make it appear as if they act in and of themselves. In other words, Ferguson, Missouri. You could equip the police with better <laughs> helmets and technologies and cameras, to, but that's not going to solve anything. What you really have to look at are problems of poverty, problems of inequality, problems of unemployment. In other words, contextually understand how these problems come to be in the first place and deal with those issues even as one is forced in the immediate uh, 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 context to deal with issues of criminality on the one hand or police brutality uh, on the other. And so I have learned in South Africa that you have to understand where these young people come from. You cannot simply judge them and dismiss them. And that is why, uh, after looking very carefully at the four white students who abused the five workers, of course they were held accountable in the courts. But we also felt it was important to say that as an institution we are also responsible. In fact, we were complicit over a hundred years of our existence as a university and therefore we uh, invited the students back to the university and withdrew the charges from the institution side with the goal of having them reconcile, which they eventually did, with the workers whom they abused. Here is a powerful lesson that victims very, very often do not want to carry the burden of abuse, do not want to carry the stigma of, of, of of marginalization. They want to hear the words, I am sorry, I apologize, I would like to make up to you for this. And nine out of 10 in the South African situation, I find a willingness, particularly on the part of black South Africans, as in the case of the University of the Free State to say, you are our boys. We in fact love you. We care for you. We want you to do well and we forgive you. But that doesn't happen again in a vacuum. It happens when the conditions are set in which this kind of tunadering, as it's called in Afrikaans, or, 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 or approach to each other as human beings, as it says in English, or Ubuntu, as it says in one of our African languages, where people come together and recognize each other through the lens of a common humanity rather than through the accident of the epidemics. It takes time. One has to understand the behavior contextually, and thirdly, one has to leave people with a sense of hope. What really makes things worse is that when we act as if our behavior is about now, as if simply solving the problem legally enables us to uh, deal with the issues on Monday morning, and so, what is the hope? What is the optimism? What is the, uh, the forward-looking vision that young people so desperately want to hear and see and feel uh, in our interventions with respect to, in this case, race relations? Give people a sense that the future is going to be better. Leaders have no other responsibility, in my view, than to set the groundwork and to enable a vision for looking to a brighter and more prosperous and more hopeful future. Black people want that, white people want that, human beings want that, young people want that, older people want that, and I think those are three really important 
lessons uh, that can help uh, all of us as we deal with crises, whether it is in France or in Ferguson or in the Free State.